There are many virtualization platforms on the market, but there are actually two key players, so Microsoft Hyper-V and VMware. So today we are going to discuss how to protect Hyper-V environments with vProtect. In this short video, I'm going to demonstrate you the key features and uh, um, capabilities of the Protect platform. My name is Marcin Kubacki and I'm Chief Software Architect at Storeware. So let's start. So first, let me show you briefly my Hyper-V environment. I have a small Hyper-V manager here, small hypervisor with a VM running. It's Windows 2012, uh, 19 and uh, with a 30 gigabytes uh, disk so I can uh, and it's uh, currently it's running. Now in vProtect UI, let me log in as the administrator, I can see that I have several different sources available to protect. So obviously virtual environments is one of the, the, the key aspects that we are going to discuss when Hyper-V is concerned, but there are actually also applications. It's a generic mechanism to protect uh, all kinds of, let's say, databases, uh, any other applications that you have or anything else that is remotely, that you, are, you can script somehow or it's remotely accessible via uh, some tools. And finally, storage. So uh, currently it's FRBD, but also file systems. If you are able to mount them on vProtect nodes, you could also easily protect them. I have set vProtect nodes, so to let, to let me explain. So I'm looking at vProtect server right now. It hosts this UI and API, so you can also automate it with external tools. But nodes, I have only one in here, is actually responsible for doing the dirty job. So it's a data mover. Now, in my environments, I, can, uh, I want to add, let's say, additional hypervisor. So in the infrastructure tab, in the hypervisor section, I have some hypervisors already defined. It's a Hyper-V hypervisor. vProtect by design is agentless solution. The only place actually where we need to install any sort of agent is for the Hyper-V uh, hypervisor. So one small agent per hypervisor, but without any agents uh, inside the actual virtual machines. So on each of these Hyper-V um, Hyper-V hypervisors, you need to install agent and connect later by adding this hypervisor from the menu in vProtect user interface. Always the very first step once you add Hyper-V uh, hypervisor is to initiate inventory synchronization. So it's also done periodically, but in our case, uh, we are just uh, initiate a task which is also visible here in our console. Now, when you go to the instances, once this inventory synchronization completes, you will see a whole bunch of VMs. Now, one of them here is, this is the, our Windows 2012. It hasn't already been detected. You can see that it has one disk, 30, gig of, of, uh, 30 gigabytes disk, and there is already some schedule and signed uh, with incremental type. So this allows us to use RCT mechanism for Windows and, and uh, create incremental backups without the need to keep snapshots on the hypervisor. Uh, inside the details, you can also track the backup time, especially which phase takes most of the time. And let me initiate now some incremental backup. This is going to uh, create a new export task and then once the data is, is uh, on the staging space, it can be forwarded, moved to any other backup destination. vProtect is one of these solutions that, that allows us to quickly integrate, first of all, multiple different sources. You have already noticed that it's not only about the virtual machines, but it's also applications and storage, but also from other hypervisors. So it is quite common to have multiple different hypervisor platforms in your uh, data center. And with a single backup solution, you are able to protect them all. Now, in my console, uh, I can see that currently a checkpoint has been created. So behind the scenes, we are ch uh, creating checkpoints and using our city mechanism, we are able to grab appropriate blocks for the incremental backups. Once it is completed, this checkpoint is going to disappear. 
Backup SLA, so whenever you would like to periodically to create uh, backups, not like uh, I'm doing right now manually, you, you will create a backup policy. So I have a single backup policy in here. I also am able to automatically assign virtual machines. For Hyper-V, it is name-based. So if you, if you have appropriate naming convention, you can automatically assign virtual machines to appropriate policies and uh, or assign them manually if you would like to. I have a single VM right now. And then you choose to which uh, backup provider you would like to um, upload your backups uh, and according to which schedule. So we can have multiple schedules. Each one is going to cover, first of all, type of the backup. Uh, I have, let's say, one incremental backup assigned uh, for uh, Friday. Uh, and, uh, well, obviously, days of the week, specific time or also interval based backups. For Hyper-V, you also support uh, snapshot management capability. This allows you to have a snapshot SLA policy that uh, periodically creates a certain amount, a uh, specific amount of the snapshots. Let's say that I would like to have three snapshots kept no longer than for three days. Uh, and this allows you to restore uh, backups from snapshot if only it is uh, necessary um, and uh, without the need to restore backups from let's say S3 object storage that you have uh, so that these restores are much faster than regular backups. It's worth to mention that we also have the uh, recovery plans so whenever you have the a bunch of VMs that you need to quickly recover. Instead of restoring virtual machines one by one, you can define a, a um, recovery plan. This recovery plan will, let's say, uh, production environment will allow you to b um, create number of tasks, um, restore tasks automatically, either periodically or on demand. So in my case, let's say it is uh, rule one. Uh, rules basically group virtual machines of the same type. You can have multiple rules and re whenever you execute recovery plan, you execute all of the rules with uh, specific, um, based on the specific settings inside each rule. In my case, I would like to have a recovery plan. Optionally, I could assign schedules and you provide restore parameters. Obviously, restore parameters are uh, for a specific platform. The, in this case, it is Hyper-V, so that uh, each rule will just match um, only virtual machines of the same type. So the parameters uh, obviously will be um, used against all of these uh, virtual machines. Now, um, for Hyper-V, we also support file level restore. Whenever you would like to uh, restore individual files from the VM, we are able to mount this uh, specific backup and allow you to restore individual files directly from the, um, from the web user interface or from, um, from, the, from the node where the backup is uh, mounted. Worth to mention that there is also the extension for the application backup. So whenever you have any sort of database, snapshot based backups may not be suitable for that matter. So you can define uh, um, which applications will be protected in agentless way using your native commands or scripts that you have already prepared. So the, uh, the mechanism in general works either by invoking a specific command on the node or remotely over SSH, which also is a, you can do on the Windows machines, Windows guest machines with some open SSH uh, client. There are predefined templates for you. So just to uh, give you any idea, the execution configuration that I'm looking right now gives you the general description how to execute specific command, what is the output, how to collect it, and later use, use this to define multiple applications so that you can um, run the same script or command against multiple databases or multiple applications. In Windows machines, notice that uh, Windows environments, um, you probably intend also to um, have multiple, let's say, uh, network shares. So you can mount them on the vProtect node and using storage providers, 
One of them is the file system storage provider. This one is a generic mechanism that allows you to backup periodically any mounted file system that is on the node. You just specify this like the local or let's say uh, network shares. Network share. And you will be asked to define the storages manually. For other storage providers like this FRBD, for instance, or Nutanix files, we are able to instantly collect information from your storage provider. And the same approach that you have seen for the virtual machines is going also to, to be used for the uh, volumes in the Ceph, let's say, uh, case. Uh, for the regular file system, we would expect to have a path available. Um, let's say that is my share one, and it would be MNT share one. This expects obviously this uh, whenever w whatever file system that you are using, it doesn't have to be Windows Share. It can be uh, CFFS. It can be any remote file system. It just needs to be mounted on the on the node. Will be protected both in full and full and incremental backups will be uh, supported in that case. As you can see, uh, in the meantime, uh, my export and store task has completed. Notice that the store task pushes backups to any sort of backup provider that you have. You can also see that there is no checkpoint on the VM at this point um, that has been left. So because behind the scenes, RCT mechanism keeps track of all of the uh, change blocks that you um, and that, that are actually being cha changed on the VM. When, when using vProtect, you are also f there is a freedom of choice as far as your storage is uh, concerned. So probably already in your infrastructure, there is one of the enterprise grade backup uh, solutions. Let's say that is IBM Spectrum Protect, Dell EMC, Avamar Networker or Veritas. And you would like to extend them with the Hyper-V uh, capability. Some of them already have the appropriate agents, some of them don't. So this is the, uh, the, the, the uh, our approach is to extend whatever type of storage that you have, like the object storage. Uh, doesn't it really have to be, let's say, Amazon's S3. It can also be any uh, locally on-prem installation of the S3 uh, compatible uh, object storage um, or OpenStack Swift. Or file system. In that case, you can basically attach anything to the vProtect node. We also are able to initialize the duplication for you, so you will save a, significantly, a significant amount of storage. Okay, so that basically concludes the, the Hyper-V uh, de demo. In this case, notice that we uh, were able not only to protect Hyper-V instances, it's a snapshot-based backup, agentless protection, but also cover applications inside, the, um, inside your environment and storage optionally if you would like to um, protect your network shares. Uh, as far as the backup is concerned, both full and incremental backups were supported. You can exclude individual drives. You can file. You can restore individual files from the from the backup uh, of the VM, um, and uh, it also allows you to have a snapshot management capability. So thank you for watching uh, the, this video and stay tuned.